Ayato is an ugly loser who has the worst luck and constantly attracts toxic women. Despite being a strong fighter, he enrolled into a magic academy in hopes of finding his sister who abandoned him just like his dad did. And this made his daily life hell as he is made to protect an obnoxious princess while also battling overpowered opponents. It all began when a handkerchief fell on him while walking by a building. He realized it had fallen out of an open window and leaped up on the windowsill to return it. He immediately froze when he saw a half-dressed girl with long pink hair in the room and blushed so hard like a ripe tomato. The girl calmly told him to turn around while he rambled on about wanting to return a handkerchief. After handing it to her, she thanked him for returning it because it was very important. He thought everything was fine and tried to leave, but she switched on her bitch mode and said he needed to die. What? This made him look at her like she was some crazy bitch, but recognized the aura she was giving off as that of a striga, and not wanting to meet his maker yet, he jumped out the window just as she used an ability called Amaryllis in an attempt to end him. He tried to reason with her, but she told him that even though she was grateful to him, he had broken into the girl's dorm, and for that he had to pay with his life. He obviously thought it was a bit extreme, and tried to explain that he was a new student and didn't mean any harm. She asked what his name was and he told her he was Amajuri Ayato, so she introduced herself as Julius Alexia and challenged him to a duel. If he won, she would accept his excuse, but if she won, she'd do with him as she pleased. He wanted to avoid fighting by revealing he had no sword, but some busybody in the crowd threw one at him. He then drew the lightsaber rip off and accepted the duel. She drew hers and created magic circles that shot big ass fire arrows. Ayato was able to deflect each one with his sword, so she decided to take it up a notch by increasing their speed. However, he was able to block just in time, although he was pushed back by the force of the attack. The students were impressed that he was able to hold out against Chulas. She, on the other hand, wondered how he was able to hold out against her and used a huge fireball which exploded in his face. Although Ayato was unharmed, just when it seemed like he was about to destroy her badge and win, he tackled her to the ground to avoid an incoming attack aimed at her. They quickly realized they were in an awkward position, so an embarrassed Julius was about to unleash another fireball. But then a blonde girl walked up to them and declared the duel invalid. She also mentioned that Ayato hadn't completed his transfer process, so the duel was pointless, as he was not actually a student at the academy yet. She then introduced herself as Claudia Enfield, the president of the student council. In Claudia's office, she officially welcomed Ayato to the academy. She told him that each year, the students competed in an event called Festas. She tells him their academy hadn't done well in recent years, and that all was required of him was to win the games. Claudia revealed that anything he desired would be granted by the academy if he did, but Ayato told her he had no such desires. Ayato asked if his sister Haruka was once enrolled in the school, so Claudia showed him a student file and told him that she was enrolled in the academy five years ago, but she had withdrawn just six months later for personal reasons. Claudia told him that there was no information regarding her in the school database. However, she told him that all Orgalux weapons had records, and although the Orgalux server rest that his sister used had no checkout logs, it did have combat data from five years ago. She told Ayato that a transfer student could pick any Orgalux weapon from the Academy's collection, and he asked if he could pick the Cerveresta. She gave him a Lux to use in the meantime, after which he then asked what paperwork he had to finish to be enrolled. Claudia told him that she had just lied to get him out of the duel right after she hugged him, saying they finally met at last. Later on, Ayato was introduced to his class by the homeroom teacher who sounded and acted like a thug. She asked him to sit beside Julius after referring to her as his girlfriend. Later in the day, Ayato asked Julius if they could be friends, but she told him she was grateful to him for saving her life, but she'd rather go bald for the rest of her life than befriend an ugly loser like him. Emotional, damn it! A boy sleeping on the desk behind Ayato told him not to take her words to heart and introduced himself as Yabuki Aishiru, his roommate. As they walked to the dorms, Ayato asked why Yabuki had referred to Julius as princess, and he told him that she was an actual princess. They soon encounter a guy who looked like he had just come out of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures quarreling with Julius. Yabuki told Ayato that the guy was Lester, a rank 9 page. He then explained that Paige was a person that was ranked amongst the top 12 in the school. Julius tried to walk away but Lester held her back even when his minions tried to stop him. This caused her handkerchief to fall, enraging her so much that she couldn't control her magic. While jogging, Ayato remembered his encounter with Julius and Lester the previous day. He had stopped them from fighting when he walked up to them, and one of Lester's minions pointed out that he was the new student who had dueled with Julius. Lester had tried to pick a fight with him, but was stopped by his minions who advised him against it. When they left, he asked her why she was at the academy fighting, even though she was a princess, so she told him she needed money, and that's why she had joined the Phoenix Festa. Ibuki asked if she had a partner for the games, since the Phoenix Festa was a tag team event, but it turns out she hadn't found anyone who matched her yet. 
When he asked what kind of partner she was looking for, she started listing the qualities of a literal knight in shining armor. Yebuki left saying he had a deadline to meet up so Ayato asked Julius for directions to the boys' dorm. He also asked if she could give him a tour of the academy and the city but she refused, which made him remind her that she owed him, so they'd agree to meet up on their free day for the tour. Later that morning in class, Ayato noticed a blue-haired girl sitting beside him. He recognized her as Saya, his old friend. He mentioned that she was still as flat as ever, but she argued she was now taller than Messi. To prove her point, she stood up and even though she was a literal definition of down-to-earth, Ayato agreed with her. He asked about her father, and she told him that he was the reason she was attending the school. Sayed explained that she enrolled at the academy just so she could give the new gun he created some exposure. Just then, the teacher walked in and noticed Saya. She immediately asked why she wasn't in class the previous day and all Saya said was that she overslept. While Ayato was speaking with Saya after class, Julius approached them and asked him if he was ready for the tour. Saya asked why Julius was the one giving him a tour, but Julius told Director Energy into growing some plots. Saya then offered to take Ayato instead, and eventually the girls got into an argument about who would take him, when Claudia walked in and said she'd do it instead. Claudia handed Ayato a form to sign in regards to his request to choose an Orgolux weapon. After she left, they headed out for the tour of the school. As Julius gave the tour, Saya kept responding and nodding her head like it was the first time she was seeing everything. When Julius asked her why she did that, she just said she had a bad sense of direction, which led Julius to ask why she offered to take Ayato on the tour in the first place. When he noticed their argument was getting out of control, Ayato offered to buy them drinks. When he left, Saya once again asked Julius why she was showing Ayato around the school, and she told her it was because he had saved her during their duel. Saya, who had no idea they had dueled until then, told Julius that even though she was strong, she stood no chance against Ayato. She told Julius that Ayato was far above them in terms of strength and at best, both she and Julius were on the same level. Just when they were about to fight, they were shot at. Julius recognized the arrows as the same ones that had been shot at her during the duel. She noticed a hooded assailant and attacked him, but her attack was blocked by another assailant using an axe-type Orgolox. Before she could strike again, Saya shot at them using a Lux grenade launcher that was too big for her to handle. But you know girls love big guns. Her next shot destroyed the water fountain, and when Ayato came back, he noticed that both girls were drenched. A flustered Julius tried to cover herself up, but Saya didn't even seem faced at all. On the day of the Orgolux weapon testing, Claudia told Ayato that although they were investigating the attack on Julius, no one had been caught. In the testing room, Ayato met Lester. Claudia told him that Lester was also there to choose a weapon. Lester was the first person to take the test, and he chose the Servaresta. Claudia explained that if the compatibility between the two was above 80% he would own it. Lester tried but his compatibility with the weapon was low, so he kept trying over and over, but instead of increasing, the compatibility points kept getting low. Claudia pointed out that he couldn't wield the weapon with only force. Ayato asked how she knew and she told him she had her own Orgolux weapon. When Lester touched the weapon, chains appeared around Ayato. Lester still tried to force Servaresta to obey him, but he was thrown against the wall. The compatibility rate dropped to a minus and he was asked to stop. Servaresta attacks Ayato, who manages to fight it off, and somehow gets it under control, causing his compatibility rate with the weapon to shoot up to almost 100. Later that night, Ayato went to see Claudia, because she had something to discuss with him. Upon entering the room, he finds Claudia, who just stepped out of the shower in a very revealing robe. After they settled down, she informed him that all the students who had signed up for the Phoenix Festa had all dropped out due to an injury. Ayato asked it was likely that the students were also attacked like Julius was and Claudia said it was possible. She begs him to stay close to Julius so he can protect her if she was attacked again. Ayato and Julius finally got to go on the city tour she had promised to take him on. While they ate lunch, they ran into Lester and his friends, who were the prime suspects in the attack against Julius. Lester, of course, considering he had the same IQ as a raging bull, tried to fight Julius, but thankfully Ayato managed to convince him that it wasn't the right place or time. On her way home, they came across a group of students from the Wolf Academy dueling. Julius immediately realized it was a trap. Without even breaking a sweat, she easily beat them. When she interrogated their leader, who was still conscious, he revealed that they were hired to hurt them. He pointed towards the tree line at a hooded figure, so Julius ran after the man despite Ayato's warning, and was caught in another ambush. Ayato was able to get to her just in time, but the assailant turned and aimed at him instead. Ayato was able to deflect the arrow shot at him with his lux, which got destroyed in the process. Julius invited Ayato to her room. <laughs> yeah, boy. When he arrived, she asked him to take off his clothes, which made the virgin idiot assume it's Freaky Friday. She quickly set him straight and told him she wanted to fix his clothes as a way to repay him. 
She told him how she had become friends with the girls at an orphanage after they saved her from some thugs. She kept sneaking out of the palace just so she could spend time with them. She had later found out that the funds needed by the orphanage were almost finished, so she decided to enroll in the academy, where she fights so she could send the money from her winnings to them. She then revealed that the handkerchief had been given to her by them, and that was why she treasured it. The next day, Julius receives a letter and leaves immediately after class. Ayato felt she was trying to keep her distance, but Claudia, after hearing about the letter, told him that Julius was trying to protect him. The headstrong boy still wanted to help her so Claudia gave him his sister's old weapon before he left. For some reason he jumped off the roof instead of taking the stairs like a normal person. Meanwhile, Julius arrived at the place the letter had asked her to go. Here, she met Silas, one of Lester's minions who revealed that he was the one behind all the attacks. Lester also arrived only to discover that he had been tricked into believing Julius had accepted his duel. But instead, Silas had tricked them both into coming so he could kill them and make Lester look like the real culprit. Lester attacked Silas, but his attack was stopped by one of the hooded assailants, who turned out to be puppets being controlled by Silas. He managed to fight them off but after struggling for a while, he was overwhelmed by their numbers. Julius tried to help by releasing a fire dragon which took out most of the puppets, but they just kept coming back like my stalker decks. Silas told Julius that her strength and skills couldn't save her. Julius takes the chance to confirm her suspicions by accusing him of working with Alekin Academy. Just when he tried to kill her, Ayato swooped in like Superman and saved her. Julius scolded him for coming, but Ayato confessed that she was now his purpose and he intended to protect her. Silas, who wasn't a man of love, rudely interrupted their moment and attacked them. So Ayato, who was still carrying Julius, unleashed his power and took out the puppets. He was able to figure out how the puppets were being controlled after a crazed-looking Silas sent all his puppets after them. Still refusing to accept defeat, Silas released his last trump card, a giant puppet that looked like a King Kong distant cousin Ugly Kong. However, Ayato still managed to defeat the ugly puppet with his luck sword. When Silas tried to escape using a flying puppet, Julius used her ability to chase after him. They knocked him out of the sky, and he fell where Cluadia was waiting for him. Just then, Ayato screamed out in pain as the chains binding him tightened, after which he fell unconscious. When he woke up in Julius' arms, she scolded him for being reckless, and then thanked him for saving her life. When she asked about the binding spell, he told her it was his sister's doing, although he didn't know why. Ayato asked Julius if she had found a partner for the Phoenix Festa, and asked if he could be her partner and Julius agreed. Meanwhile, Silas, who ran from Claudio, was eventually cornered and injured by her. From the shadows, a man spoke to her, and it sounded that they were planning something together. She told him to get information out if Silas and the man turned out to be Ibuki. Some days later, Cluadia had a meeting with the student council presidents of the other academies, where they discussed the cooperation between Saidukan Academy and Alakan Academy to create a new Lux weapon. Meanwhile, Ayato was running late for his practice with Julius. In the rush, he bumped into a girl who quickly apologized and ran off in embarrassment. During practice, Julius created a huge circle of fire, which she converted into spinning discs and sent them after Ayato. He easily avoids getting hit and deflects the attacks with his sword. He runs and tries to attack her head on instead of just defending. He realized too late that she had tricked him and then she covered him in a fire dome. Using his sword, he slashed through the fire and put it out before ending the match with his blade on her neck. When she asked how long he could hold out before the curse kicked in, he revealed he could last for three minutes. On hearing that he was a three-minute guy, she warned him against getting into fights and revealing his skills. Saya and Lester soon entered the training room, and while Saya and Julius argue about how much time she and Ayato have spent together, Lester thanked Ayato for saving him even though he didn't outright say it because of pride. Claudia walked in with two girls, and introduced them as Camilla and Ernesta, students from Alicant. They were the students that were going to work together with Saidukan Academy to make a new Lux weapon. Surprisingly, an overexcited Ernesta confessed that she was the one that created the puppets that Silas used against Ayato and Julius. She declared that she liked him, but told him he won't be so lucky the next time. She kissed him on the cheek, which of course, pissed Julius and Saya off. Camilla noticed Saya's Lux gun and pointed out that although she was impressed, it had a lot of flaws. Saya demanded she apologize for mocking her father's creation. When Camilla realized who her father was, she stated that she would never apologize because her father's actions caused them problems. Ernesta told Saya that if she wanted to force an apology from Camilla, she should do it during the Phoenix Festa. Outside, Camilla asked what Ernesta thought about Ayato, and she admitted she needed more data on him. Camilla asked if she was planning on pulling any stunts, and she said she'd do anything to achieve her dreams. Later that day, while Ayato discussed Alicant's research teams with the Ibuki, he heard the sound of a slap. The girl he had run into earlier that day had been hit by a man. 
Before he could hit her again, Ayato stopped him, revealing that only a man with a tiny sausage hits a girl. The man said he had every right to discipline her, and then introduced himself as Tudu Koichiru, Kirin's uncle. Ayato asked that he never use violence against Kirin again, so Tudu revealed he would stop, but only if he can beat Kirin in a duel. She asked him to reject the duel, but Ayato stubbornly refused and accepted the challenge. Kirin attacks Ayato, and he is able to defend himself as expected. When she acknowledged his strength, he too praised her. Julius, who was watching the battle, noticed that Ayato was only defending himself and not attacking Kirin. Yabuki, who was also observing, revealed that Ayato didn't stand a chance. He also pointed out that Ayato still hasn't gotten Cerveresta completely under his control and hasn't even landed a hit on Kirin. Ayato was able to read Kirin's movements and tried to find the perfect time to strike her so he could win, but he was already running out of energy. Eventually, the duel ended and Kirin was announced as the winner. She apologized before she left with her uncle. Julius asked Ayato what he had been thinking going up against the number one rank student, and that was when he realized who he had just fought. Despite winning the duel, Kuchiru talked down to Kirin and reminded her that she was too weak and stupid to succeed without following his plans. At the other end, an angry Julius threw a washcloth on Ayato's head. Ayato apologized for dueling against Kirin, even though she had warned him not to fight any duels. She told him that she would have done the same thing if she was in his position and would have been disappointed if he hadn't stood up for Kirin. She however admitted that she was angry he lost, because she hoped he could beat Kirin. As they spoke, they realized that they had to change their strategy for the festa, because Ayato had fought in public. Ayato meets up with Claudia to get a new badge. She told him that Kirin's uncle was in charge of scouting talents for the academy, and that he was trying to become a member of the board by using Kirin. She also said that only people who had no personal desires and have undergone training can become members of the board. When Ayato asked how she knew all that, she said her mother was a member. At the boys' dorm, Ayato was surprised to see Kirin waiting for him. She had come to thank him for standing up for her. As he walked with her to her dorm, an excited Kirin told him she had noticed he used an ancient sword technique. Ayato also complimented her swordsmanship, but she reveals that it was the only thing she was good at. He then asked her why she fought, and she told him it was because she wanted to save her father. This made him invite her to train with him and Julius, but she told him that she was warned against showing her skill in front of other students. He then offers to train alone with her in the mornings. Just as Ayato dropped Kirin off at her dorm, Saya dropped out of a tree and almost strangled him. He asked what she was doing there, and she told him she had been looking for him to ask if he would be her tag partner but he told her he was already partners with Julius. At Alicant Academy, Camilla and Ernesto watched the Tenorio faction test out a new weapon against Ayato. When they noticed Kirin was training with Ayato, this made everything more exciting, because they would get to see Kirin's skill firsthand. Just when Kirin and Ayato noticed they were being followed, they were suddenly attacked by small dragons, who regenerated when they were cut and could shoot fireballs out of their mouths. Ayato realized he was embarrassing himself by continuously slashing the dragons with no plan. Fortunately, Kirin realized that the dragons had a core, and by cutting the dragons into tiny pieces, she was able to destroy the core. By doing this, she saved Ayato from looking more stupid than he apparently was. The remaining dragons ran away and Ayato, finally using his brain, realized that the core was synthetic and was obviously from Alicant. The dragon returned and started shooting fireballs at them, and while they dodged, the pavement beneath Ayato caved and he fell. Kirin was able to grab his wrist, but the edge collapsed, and they both fell into the hole. After coming out of the water in the sewer where they had fallen, they were attacked by a much bigger dragon. Using his lux, Ayato was able to block the head on attack while holding on to Kirin who couldn't swim. Kirin asked him to let go of her, because she was dragging him down, but he refused and used his lux to slice a nearby pillar and told her to stay on it. Just then, the dragon attacked again. So Ayato cut off its head and realized that it could regenerate like the smaller ones they encountered before. He then asked Kirin if she could sense its core, and she said she could, but it was moving around inside the dragon. Ayato channeled his mana into his lux, and just as the dragon was about to shoot fireballs at them, he jumped up and slashed the dragon in two, destroying the core in the process. Since he used so much mana, the curse activates, causing the chains binding him to tighten until he passes out. When he woke up, he explained to Kirin that he could only fight for five minutes before losing consciousness. While waiting to be rescued, she told him she wanted to save her father who was detained for killing a man who held her hostage. Because he was a Jin Stella, the charges were dropped, and he was sent to prison. She blamed herself for what happened, even though she was only a child when it happened. She revealed that her uncle was the only one who could help her free her father, which was why she did everything he asked her to do. 
He told her that she wasn't alone and that she could rely on him to help her out. Shortly after, they are rescued. At the academy, Kuchiru told Kirin to stay away from Ayato, but she refused, saying he had taught her so much. This made him slap her while reminding her that she couldn't win the festival without him. He reminded her that without his help, she couldn't save her father. He tried to slap her again, but she stopped him. She thanked him for all he had done for her in the past before leaving. As her first act of freedom, she challenged Ayato to a duel. From the box where Ayato's friends were watching, Julius expressed her worry over the duel, so Saya asked her to chill out because Ayato had fought someone stronger than Karen before. When she asked who it was, she told her it was his sister. Lester and Yabuki also mentioned that Ayato had borrowed their Lux weapons, and they believed he had a plan. As the duel began, Ayato was able to dodge her attacks while he took note of the techniques she used. When Karen lunged at him, he fought off her attacks and defended himself, and just when she thought she had him cornered, he switched his sword for a spare, catching her off guard. After regaining her composure, she countered his attack, and he once again switched his weapon, this time to Darger's. She was able to counter this too, but that gave him the chance to use a skill called Purifying Sweep, which basically had him flipping her over. This move secured his victory against her. Afterward, both Julius and Sayo were congratulating Ayato on his win when Claudia asked if she could come in. She had brought Kirin with her, and Kirin asked if she could join their training sessions. Julius was reluctant, but Sayo was all for it, even though she only attended their training sessions uninvited. Just then, Kirin's uncle pounded on the door and demanded they let him in. He tried to grab Kirin, but she batted his hand away. He then tried to hit her, but Ayato stopped him. Being the cowardly bastard that he was, he played the weak human card because Ayato was obviously stronger than him. His fear didn't stop him from threatening to spill Kirin's secret about her father. Claudia, who had been listening and watching in silence, told Koichiru that if he did anything to harm Kirin's reputation in the school, she would not leave him alone and even mentioned that her mother would surely back her. This made him back off and walk away defeated. Kirin still thanked him for all he had done for her, even though he was a selfish, manipulative prick. At Alicant, Ernesta and Camilla watched a review of all the footage and data they had collected from Ayato's fight with the dragon. Ernesta used them to upgrade her puppets and happily told Camilla that she was ready for the main performance. Saya approached Kirin and told her that she admired the fact that she was fighting for her father because she was doing the same thing. She then asked Kirin to be her partner for the Phoenix Festa, but she was too stunned to answer her. Some days later, the girls met up, but had no idea what to do since they had never socialized before. Saya then suggested that they go shopping so she could get a birthday present for her father. At the mall, Saya couldn't settle on a gift for her father. She recalled that her father always gave her a new gun for her birthday and decided to do the same for him. She asked Kirin for help to locate a gun shop, and when they got there, Saya picked out an old gun. Kirin asked why she had picked that one, so she told her that even if it was trash, it had a generator that was similar to her father's work, so she was sure it would help with his research. Saya then asked Kirin what she wanted to do, and she asked Saya to teach her how to swim. During the lesson, Kirin confessed that she wanted to learn how to swim so that Ayato would be proud of her. Saya went to get some drinks and asked Kirin to continue practicing. Kirin accidentally crashed into another student who was floating in the pool. Although she apologized, the girl refused to accept and tried to challenge her to a duel. She then recognized Kirin as the top-ranked student at Saiduken and tried to chicken out. She soon realized that Saya was unranked, so she challenged her to a duel. She then introduced herself as Violet Weinberg, a student of Queensvale Girls Academy. She bragged about her rank, and when Saya accepted the duel, she was shocked. When the duel began, she tried to show off her fancy skills, but Saya pulled out a Lux Reagan. Before she could react, Saya fired and sent her skipping like a rock across the pool, knocking her out in the process, which meant that Saya won. At the end of the day, Saya advises Kirin to stick up for herself more. Kirin told her that her uncle had always treated her that way, so she didn't know how to stand up for herself. Saya told her that she had picked her as her partner, because she used the same swordsmanship that Ayato used and she liked that. During their training session the next day, the two were in complete sync, and it showed that they had grown. In the dungeon at La Wolf Academy, Dirk and Kashimura Corona opened the cell holding Iron. Dirk ordered Iron to take part in the Phoenix Festa and eliminate Ayato because he might become a problem in the future. Irene agreed after Dirk confirmed that her sister was doing fine. At the arena for the Phoenix Games, the chairman of the Festa committee, Mediev Mesa, announced that there were changes in the rules and regulations. The new rule now allowed contestants to use any autonomous weapon of their choice and they could substitute them in the arena. As Ayato and Julius take the stage, the announcers hype them up by talking about their ranks. Ayato was nervous but Julius seemed to handle the attention well. As soon as the match started, their opponents rushed at them. 
which only confirmed Julia's prediction that they would try using close combat. She then walked off and told Ayato she was counting on him. Ayato made a show of breaking the chains binding him and immediately moved towards his opponents with great speed. The clueless opponents stood speechless, and her badges fell to the floor broken, thus making Ayato and Jolis the winners. The next match was between Alicant and Lo Wolf. The Alicant contestants were substituted by Ernesta's puppets. The first puppet looked like a Jiga Chad and was called Artie, and the other one who looked female was called Rimacy. The Yellow Wolf team felt they were being used as test subjects. Before the match began, Artie offered the Yellow Wolf team a handicap to attack freely for 60 seconds. The match began and the Yellow Wolf team struggled to get past the puppet's defense. When the 60 seconds were up, the offensive ability of the puppets easily overwhelmed their opponents who had pushed themselves too hard trying to attack them. Their ability and strength left both the audience and the contestants in shock. With the match over, Ayato and his friends analyzed the puppet's ability, claiming it would be a problem for them. Saya received a call from her father, who geeked out on how powerful the puppet's defense was before he told her that he had sent her a new gun and asked her to pick it up from customs, so she left together with Kirin to pick it. Ayato and Julis both decided they needed more training time before their duel and left. Julis and Ayato tried to make it back to the arena for the next match when they came across Iron beating up some thugs in the middle of the street. When she was done, Irene noticed the two and remembered Ayato from the file Dirk had shown her. She tried to start a fight with them and pulled out her Lux weapon which looked like a scythe, and with a deadly glint in her eyes, she looked like the Grim Reaper himself. Before she could do anything, she was stopped by her sister Priscilla, who apologized for her sister's actions. Julis told Ayato that she suspected that Lo Wolf was up to something, and that Irene's behavior had confirmed it. Meanwhile, Saya and Kirin begin their match. Kirin's opponent used his hands to block her attacks and appeared to be very skilled in close combat. But Kirin easily defeated him thanks to her speed and nimbleness. Saya, on the other hand, used her gun as a shield to block her opponent's attacks, and when she had an opportunity, she used her gun to blast him, which ensured their victory. The second round of the competition began on the fifth day. Ayato and Julis competed against their next opponents, and this time around, Julis took point. She blocked an attack with her Lux easily, after which she targeted her flames at her opponent. While trying to avoid the fireballs, the girl tripped and showing no mercy. Julis hit her with the fireballs at point black wrong game. The second opponent didn't even stand a chance because Julis hit her with a huge fireball, while Ayato just stood like a useless artifact. Lester and Randy were the next ones in the arena, and they were up against Crazy Irene and her sister Priscilla. Their main strategy was to prolong the match because Irene's Lux drained the energy of its wielder. Unfortunately, she saw through their plan and attacked Randy first. Lester tried to attack her, but she blocked it and drop kicked him, before going after Randy with the force of her gravity controlling Lux that knocked him out. Lester used an all out attack on her and managed to knock her down, but she got up while acknowledging his power and said she'd show him her full strength. As it turns out, in exchange for its power, her Lux required blood, and the only way to get blood was for Iron to drink it. She wasn't just a crazy bitch, she was a crazy vampire bitch who drank from her sister, who had regenerative powers that not only healed her, but also healed Iron through her blood. She fired gravity balls at Lester, and to make sure he couldn't avoid them, she pinned him down with gravity. In the end, Lester conceded, making Irene and Priscilla the winners, while Julis and Ayato watched in fear of the duo's scary ability. In the viewing booth, Claudia congratulated Ayato for reaching the final. She expressed how glad she was just sitting alone with him. But before she could continue, Ayato got a call from Kirin. She told him that she had lost Saya, and that when she called her, Saya had no idea where she was. Ayato knew she was a walking Zoro with no sense of direction, so he agreed to help look for her. He quickly apologized before leaving to search for Saya. While searching, Ayato ran into Priscilla, who was being chased by some thugs. Ayato helped her hide and she explained to him that her sister had caused a commotion at a casino, and that was why she was being chased. Just then, Irene appeared out of nowhere and tried to attack Ayato because thought he was the one who tried to harm her sister. Before the matter escalated, Priscilla stopped her and explained that Ayato was the one to save her. She was still suspicious of Ayato when he received a call from Saya who told him she had been found by Kirin. He then explained to Irene that he had been looking for his friend when he ran into her sister. She told him that she owed him, and unless she settled that debt immediately, it would be awkward later because they had been matched against each other for the final round. A pissed off Iron bursted into Dirk's office and demanded to know why her sister had been attacked despite her contract with him. He revealed that she was cannon fodder, and as long as she didn't die, he could care less. Irene looked like she had been possessed 
tried to strike Dirk with her locks, but she was however unable to as an invisible force, which she suspected was a cat, blocked the attack. Dirk told her that the cats didn't help Priscilla because Ayato had been there. After she left, Dirk ordered Corona to do a reading. She told him that the readings showed that the sisters would be victorious. Since knew the readings were always accurate, he made a call to the seventh golden eye. Ayato had been invited by the sisters for dinner, and a pissed Julius reminded him that they were going to fight them in the final round. Ayato explained that it was just a thank you dinner, and she told him she'd accompany him. During dinner, Irene let it slip that she gambled because she needed money to pay back a loan she got from Dirk. She couldn't pay back with money from the festa because that was one of Dirk's conditions. To pay back her debt to Ayato, she let them know that Dirk had ordered her to destroy Ayato. She also told them that Dirk considered Ayato's lux a big problem. After dinner, Priscilla walked Ayato and Julius out. While outside, she told them she was glad she could be of help to her sister because she was fighting for her. However, she admitted that her sister became a different person whenever she wielded her lux and it scared her. Later that day, Ayato went to see Claudia because he was concerned about Irene's strange ability. He met her asleep and when he tried to wake her up, she attacked him and tried to kill him. But he managed to hold her off until she woke up. She apologized to him and agreed to explain what had just happened if he joined her team for the Griffin Festa, which he agreed to. She then told him that her Orgalux had made her experience her own death 1,200 times, as it was the price to pay for using its power to see the future. This revelation made him worried but Cluadia brushed it off saying she was already used to it. He eventually asked about Irene's Orgalux and Claudia, told him that the weapon could alter the body and mind of whoever used it. To prove this, Irene is shown looking crazed and standing with dead bodies laying on the ground behind her. To get ready for the final round, Irene refilled her health bar from her very own blood bank. Meanwhile, Ayato proposed a plan to Julius, and she agreed to go along with this plan as long as they won. The match began, and Julius shot fire discs at Irene who deflected all of them. Ayato attacked her with his Cerveresta but she was able to stop him. Still blocking his attacks, she noticed the fireballs Julius had sent her way and used her gravity balls to stop them. She attacks Ayato, but thanks to Julius, he is able to evade it while Julius shoots fireballs at Priscilla, so Irene creates a barrier around them both. Irene drinks more of Priscilla's blood to replenish her energy, and when she's done, Ayato and Julius take turns in attacking her. She then realized they were trying to take out her Orgalux, so sent her gravity balls towards them. Ayato is able to slash through all of them with his sword and attacks her, pushing her into a trap set by Julius. That trap happened to be a decoy, and a distracted Irene fell into the real one, which blasted a hole in the center of the arena. However, Irene wasn't affected by the blast, but she had completely been taken over by her weapon and started drinking her sister's blood. While her gravity pull held Julius down, Ayato walked toward her and tried to talk her back to her senses. She regained her senses for a bit and dropped her sister but once again, her lux took over, causing her to release a powerful wave of gravity. Ayato quickly hit the Gabby scythe out of Irene's hand, broke it in two and finally destroyed the gem on it. Immediately Ayato and Julius were announced as the winners. He fell down as he had reached his limit. This lets everyone watching know that he had a limit to how much he could use his power. Sometime later Priscilla woke up in a hospital because her sister accidentally suckered dry. Irene apologized to her sister and Priscilla told her that she wanted to become stronger so she could fight alongside her instead of acting like a walking first air box. When Ayato woke up, he told Julius not to worry about him and that he'd be fine by the time they had their next match. But Julius wanted him to rely on her as much as possible. Claudia, Saya, and Kirin came into the room and started fussing over him, with each girl trying to claim the right to watch over him while he recovered. In the empty arena where Ayato's sister had fought, a man in a brown suit picked up a pair of broken bloody glasses and blamed Haruka for delaying his plans, but smiled and said it was time to start over. Comment on each and if you think Ayato's sister is a villain, and if you want part 2, get this video to 10,000 likes. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.